Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, That Model Railway Guy, for another video where, once again, I'm trying my hand at some laser cutting to create something a little bit special for the layout. Now, with a laser cutter and engraver, there's obviously lots of safety that you have to take into consideration. The main one, of course, is wearing eye protection for the laser. But as I showed in my first laser cutting video, you do need to have proper ventilation as well. Now, that's because the cutting process does create quite a lot of smoke, which obviously it's not very good to be inhaling. Now, I'm quite lucky in that the room I generally work in has lots of windows and a nice through draft as well, so the smoke tends to clear out quite quickly. Now, that was fine when I was creating relatively simple structures that didn't take too long to cut, but today I'm hoping to make a road bridge for the layout to go over the track, and this has quite a lot of different parts that I need to both engrave and cut out. So, Creality have very kindly sent over their enclosure that they make for the Falcon 2 laser cutter, which keeps all of the smoke contained and then vents it out of the side. There's also a nice tinted panel as well so that you can keep an eye on the machine itself. And like I said, Creality did send this to me for free along with the Falcon 2 laser cutter which I've been using in all my videos so far. That said, they don't have any creative control over what I say here, I'm free to make whatever video I like but just bear that in mind during the video. So, with that said, let's take a look at the enclosure, and then I'll get to work on creating the bridge itself. So, here is the Falcon 2, which you've all seen before, but beside it we now have the enclosure, which is really what we're interested in today. It's a fairly simple design with an open bottom that just sits over the Falcon 2 and contains all the nasty smoke. The main structure is a set of rods that all push together really easily, and then the canvas hood just pulls over the whole thing. And you can see there are some velcro tabs on the bottom which just hold it securely onto the frame. There's also an extractor fan on the side as well which you just screw into place, and then you can attach the pipe that's included to vent all the smoke out the window. And you can attach this on either side too, depending on what works best for your own setup. And like I said earlier, this enclosure basically works just by sitting over the entire machine. Additionally, we have a nice tinted panel making up most of the front and top of the enclosure so that we can keep an eye on the machine while it's doing its thing. And this also fully unzips as well so that we can get the materials in and out. There are also little rubber openings in the sides too, and this is so that the various wires and the hose for the air assist can still be easily connected onto the machine. And then finally the pipe from the enclosure can be routed out of the window and we're ready to go. So you can see the Falcon 2 is happily cutting all the parts for the bridge inside the enclosure and I'm perfectly fine sitting here beside it even without the safety glasses. Uh, that's thanks to the tinted window on the front which in tandem with the tinted panel on the laser module itself means that very little light is actually getting through. Um, while I wouldn't recommend staring through the window at it, it's fine for just being in the same room as it. Uh, you'll notice the sides are completely solid as well, so this allows me to get on with other things while I'm supervising the machine. Um, I tend to paint up little models and figures, and so this just protects me from any stray laser flashes and means that I don't have to wear those safety glasses again, which is very handy for painting and getting colours matched up. The extractor fan is also doing a great job of taking all the smoke inside the enclosure and venting it outside. Uh, because the enclosure is just sat on the table, it's not a tight seal all the way around the bottom, so occasionally a little bit of smoke escapes uh, if you're doing a lot of heavy duty cutting on something like MDF for example. But even then it's minimal in comparison to not having the enclosure at all. The only thing I would say is that the fan itself does seem to be level with the frame of the Falcon 2, so you need to make sure you don't accidentally block it. But Generally, it seems to do a pretty good job of removing all of the smoke from the enclosure and keeping it out of the room as well. Once a project has finished cutting, I then just give it an extra minute or two for all the excess smoke to clear out before I open up the front panel and usually by then it's all gone.
With the various parts for the bridge now cut, I can start to assemble my custom kit. The first thing to do is glue together these two parts that make up the beams underneath the bridge deck. Having two parts stuck together like this just gives the area a bit of relief for some extra detail. With those set aside for drying, I can also put together the pillars that go at each corner of the upper deck. You can see the engraved stone pattern has come out really nicely on these, and I've used the pattern itself as part of the tabs that lock the four sides of the pillar together. The top of the pillar needs covering too, so I've got these two different sized rectangles which will form the cap, with the smaller one going on top of the other. This can then be glued onto the pillar itself, and then this one is complete. And as you can see, I've already done the other three that I'll need for this particular bridge build. So now I can move on to the main structure itself, and much like the pillars, the main supports for the bridge just slot together using the tabs I created around the stone pattern. The two supports can then be glued to the underside of my bridge deck, which you can see has plenty of slots cut into it. Luckily everything lines up correctly, which implies I got my measurements correct. The two beams are now dry as well, so these can be glued in underneath the deck as well. This was a little tricky to do with the supports already in place. If I was doing it again, I would probably start with these first and then put the supports on afterwards. To add a little extra detail to the underside of the bridge, I then have this piece which just glues in place underneath. This just adds an extra bit of detail as sometimes I do like to get my camera right down to eye level when I'm filming the layout. To form the sides of the bridge, I then have two pieces that glue together so that we can have the stone pattern on both sides. There's also a strip of capping stones that needs to be glued along the top too. Then the sides can be added to the bridge, again with the tabs fitting into the slots on the deck. Next, the pillars that I put together earlier can now be glued in position, with two at each end of the bridge. And then to finish up, I have a few finishing pieces just to add a little bit of extra detail. First up is this strip that runs along the length of the entire bridge and covers over the join between the sides, the deck and the beam. And then finally, as with the cottage I laser cut, I've also made some coins from thin laser board which I can fold around the corners of the supports to finish these off nicely.
With the construction of the bridge now complete, it's time to give this a very quick paint job just to finish it off. Off camera, I gave this a rough coat of cream, which will act as my base layer. And now I'm just gonna dry brush the rest of the structure in gray. By dry brushing this on, the paint is thinner in some areas, which allows the cream base coat to shine through. This creates a really nice stone effect really quickly with some natural variation. For some details I did opt to pick out completely in grey, mainly the beams and the detail under the bridge, as these would more likely be made of metal. I also gave the coins a heavy coat of grey too, just to help them stand out a little bit. And so with painting complete, let's take a look at the finished result. Again, I'm really happy with how this has turned out, and if it wasn't already apparent, I definitely think laser cutting is the way I'll go for making custom structures like this in the future. Here's a quick look at the bridge in situ on the layout. As you can see, it really looks the part sitting over the railway line and creating a nice scenic break for the trains. This is a much more complicated build than my previous attempts with lots more parts that needed to be made. I have to admit, I was really glad that I had the enclosure for the Falcon 2 while making the parts for this. Cutting without an enclosure is fine if you're doing just very quick cuts every so often in a well-ventilated room. But for something as complex as this with so many additional parts to cut, it was really great to have the enclosure keeping the room clear and also allowing me to get on with other things while I was supervising the machine. Don't worry, you'll get to see how this entire scene comes together in an upcoming video really soon. But until then, that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.